Hi, I'm Jessica Bolton and this is the Daily Mirror's Jess Saying. I'm here today with one of the biggest bands from the last few decades. They've sold 55 million records, they've had 14 number ones and they're about to play Wembley Stadium in the first gigs there since before the pandemic. So welcome please, it's Nikki, Mark, Shane and Kian. it's Westlife. Oh! Hi guys! Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Now, first thing first, obviously you've got these two great big gigs at Wembley Stadium, um, which will be the first time um, in two years that anyone's played there. What's it going to be like to get back out onto stage? Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, pretty, pretty amazing, to be honest, Jess. I think after everything that's happened in the last kind of you know, year and a half um, since the whole kind of pandemic started. I think, um, you know, just as time has gone on, it's been it's been tough to kind of see this coming. And now that it's kind of here and the UK have allowed, you know, concerts to go ahead this summer. I mean, we're absolutely buzzing for it. Um, hopefully the fans are buzzing for it. And just to be able to get back out on stage, I think it's going to be quite an emotional night, really. Yeah. We actually do stand on a stage and there's that many people together. Uh, yeah. You know, to see people together like that again, I think is is going to be absolutely incredible. And uh, the I've got a question here from Amy saying, when are the tickets uh, for the tour coming out? The tickets for the second Wembley date are going on sale today. Um, so and and the tour is later, isn't it now? Because well, to, to be honest, we I mean, we don't have a tour at the moment because mm. it was, Last year's tour was 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 pretty was obviously cancelled, so we only kept the Wembley date in the UK that was rescheduled to this year. So that's night one, which is sold out. And um, so really, the um, and Scarborough actually we have a show in Scarborough that sold out as well. But apart from that, this Wembley show is the gig uh, for us this year. You know, this is what we're working towards now. And um, you know, we've no we've no look to do any other shows in 2021. Uh, as of as of yet, as of now, if you know at the moment, so um, we hope to tour again, and if we do, it'll be more than likely it'll be deep into 2022 when the world is the rest of the world will say is is opened up as well. But I'm so excited for this one because it feels like we're putting everything into the, these two shows now. Yeah, uh, it also feels like it's been so long since we did the reunion tour that this is a mini reunion tour in itself. So. Yeah, it'd be a great night. Those two nights are going to be special this year for many, many reasons. And and what have you? What's it been like when you're because you're performers? You haven't been able to do it for you know eighteen months since mm -hmm. all of this began. What's it like to um, want to have that buzz again? Is it going to be really weird to be you know finally up there? It must have been really annoying all this time when you couldn't perform. I've actually um, been doing. Been doing gigs all through lockdown, actually. Um, very, very intimate <laughs> gigs. Very yeah. intimate gigs in my kitchen. Yeah. Um, the audience is my daughter, um, and sometimes my <laughs> fiance. Um, but you know, sometimes I mean, I do. I'm one of those people that sings every single day, like regardless of whether or not I'm I'm doing a work or whatever. Um, and so yeah, I sing in the kitchen. I put on like YouTube on the big TV and just get loads of backing tracks up and. Layla gets it at the concert, whether she likes it or not. But I think she kind of likes it. Um, it's either, you know, you either put on like Peppa Pig or Charlie and the Numbers or one of those kids' cartoons, yeah. or I have to entertain her myself by singing songs. And normally she likes it. You know, sometimes she might kind of start screaming as if to go, oh, no, skip this one, go on to the next one. But um, that's the kind of only <laughs> set of performance I've had. But I have been singing every day, in, in fairness. So I haven't missed singing, but I've missed the crowds, you know, Miss, missed yeah. the reaction. Well, I don't know, Mark. What I want to know is, can you sing the Peppa Pig theme tune in Mark's voice to Layla? Um, no, but I, I, <laughs> what I end up doing is sometimes I will mute the Peppa Pig and I will do my own voiceover in a kind of a <laughs> love it. comedy way. Daddy Pig down in the basement. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, um, I won't do the impressions there because it's probably not actually safe to do on national. Um, <laughs> I love, I love that, and I love that you're you're singing kitchen joke because she's she's only little, isn't she? She's what now coming up to two, is that right? She's one, she's one and a half very soon, so that that's where she's at. But she she actually sings along, and if she sings along, whether she loves Katy Perry, she loves the Beach Boys. Um, they're just kind of two albums that we would have played her a lot when she's when she's getting a bit unsettled, you know, and the settler right back down. But she now. 
I mean, you could play her any song in the world. She's she's just like, whatever, mate. Don't care. And then you put on Katy Perry and she's like, yay! You know, so. <laughs> Charming. So you're just a harsh critic there for you. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lindsay Shaw here is saying, who is the worst at homeschooling? Because you've all got kids now. Um, so you've all had to, you know, get your hands dirty and do a bit of homeschooling. Who's the best and who's the worst? I'm probably the best because I haven't done any of it. Yeah, I think it depends on the subjects um, for me. Anyway, uh, Jillian, Jillian's been doing most of the homeschooling. She's been amazing, um, sure. especially, especially with the languages. I kind of leave the, the kitchen when the languages come. Yeah. Um, but if, if it's maths, I, I like doing the maths with the boys. Uh, the boys love maths, and, and I always love maths in school. So um, I come in for them uh, for that subject. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing that when you think about the children in general, um, what they've had to go through and stuff. And even my daughter's a lot older, and, you know, she's been more or less online schooling for the last year. Yeah. Um, or a few months in the middle when they went back to school. And, but they do full, they do full days. They do, for, they do from 9 o'clock till 4 o'clock every day, and they do the regular classes. So... It's amazing what the kids have done and, and how they've, you know, gotten through it. Because um, it's not easy. Because now you've got, you've pretty much got your own little mini band as well. Um, if you can put them all together to do a bit of singing, haven't you? Uh, you can have little <laughs> Westlife juniors. But um, I, I know... I know with with Layla and obviously your husband Kaylin and um, that was such a happy moment for you. Oh, you got married, Mark. When did you get married, man? We we I called him your husband, Being your married. partner. So, honestly, <laughs> everyone calls him my husband, and I never correct him because you know it's he might as well be. You know, we just actually haven't done the deed yet. You know, we haven't had the big party yet, Mark. <laughs> I've married you off. Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'd happily be married if, if, I, if I click my finger. I'll be married today. I, I'd be grand with that. You know. I like that. I like that. I'm, I'm glad I haven't put pressure on you to get down on one knee now. You talked about maybe you'd want uh, more siblings for Layla. Uh, is that something um, in your mind? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, it's, it's interesting because the pandemic and just all the various, you know, uh, side effects of that uh, have changed things for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons and you know there's a couple of extra considerations for us in terms of our second surrogacy journey and um, you know to do with vaccinations and stuff like that I'm not getting into it too much obviously but um mm. you know covid has presented new challenges to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons and you know the second surrogacy journey is something that we absolutely want to do um but we'll do it you know when we're 100 percent confident that there's no extra risks involved you know like, i mean why would we bother taking a risk um but you know we are actively researching like i like i kind of do everything i heavily re i done so much research like a, like a nerd when it came to layla's surrogacy journey and that's we're, we are in the process of of sort of researching and thinking about the second journey but it's not quite there yet you know I bet you have a lot of volunteers who, you know, like to help out. And and I, I know when you talked about you, you famously coming out in, in 2005 and, and you said that you wish you'd done it a lot earlier. Do you yeah. think it's easier for people nowadays or has it changed in the industry? I think it's easier for more people, but it's not across the board easier for everyone, you know. Um, mm. I think basically there's, there seems to be, you know, quite a, common theme you know people the, the, I, I nearly put it like the further away from a multicultural city you know which always cities always end up in our big towns or wherever they always end up in mental, melting pots of lots, lots of different people cultures opinions religions everything and i think that the further away from that you get aka the, you know the rural areas um the the, the more religion plays a part you know the more devout and the, the more heavy it gets religionized and and i think that probably plays into the harder it being for say a lad that lives on a farm and works on a farm mm -hmm. you know um it's 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 not easy for everybody but absolutely it's got easier for a lot of people you know a lot of people we look at tv now well, like when i was young and i looked at tv i was like well there's no there's nobody really like me on tv There'd be a couple of people like julian clary who i absolutely love you know mm -hmm. i was I'm not like, I love Julian Clary, but I'm not like him. So if I told people I was gay, they'd think I'm like Julian Clary. Like, and that's not a bad thing. It just doesn't represent me personally, you know? And so nowadays you've got so much amazing representation. I mean, the most recent thing, which I've watched about three times, which is very rare to me, is um, 
you know, it's a sin, the BBC. Yeah, nice. you know? And I mean, the story that that tells, first of all, is heart wrenching. And it's going back to telling the story of a lot of people back in the 80s. It was horrific. Yeah. But, but it's just representation of young gay men and women on TV. So when the kids of today turn their TV on, they're seeing people it's that are something. just. Like there's seen people that are just like them on TV, so it just says to the public that it's okay and everyone's cool with it. Um, and it's, um, you, you've played a part in that as well, which is which is amazing. And I I know that you've been asked um, uh, before a few years ago about doing Strictly. Now, obviously, um, Nicola Adams sort of uh, made that record last year with being the first same-sex couple on Strictly. Is it something that you'd like to do as well as the first sort of male same-sex couple? Well, I definitely would. I mean, first of all, I loved what they'd done this year or last year um, and I would love to see a same sex couple just I think they should just get up get on with it and do it mm. you know I think th th the longer they wait the, just the bigger it will become you know like a male, a male same sex yeah, yeah I mean, other other shows have done it and like if I had a chance to be part of you know a bit of cultural history and something that's really important um, important uh, I think I'd, I would always consider it because you know, it's a very special moment in history of UK TV for that to happen. Um, but it has happened now, in fairness, you know. Um, yeah. so I think they've done a great job and um, fair play to them. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rebecca here, Keely Rebecca is saying, please can she have a shout out from you guys because it would make her day. Hi, Keely. How are you? Hi, Keely, Rebecca. How are you? Thank you, guys. Now, um, obviously, you've got other big stuff in the pipeline coming up. I hear America might be on the cards again. Yeah. Um, America, Can you tell me about that? <laughs> yeah, America is something that is kind of like Wembley Stadium, Jess. You know, it's kind of very much a bucket list thing for us as a band. Um, and, you know, it's, it's taken us obviously 23 years to get to Wembley Stadium. Mm. Um, but we're here. You know, we're finally playing Wembley and we're playing it for two nights, which is even more amazing. Um and in the last couple of years, since we came back with Hello, My Love um, and the last album, we've been away for a long time. And a lot has changed in the world, obviously, with social media and stuff like that. And, you know, we've heard a lot of, obviously, stats and figures coming from America. And America is our third biggest streaming figures for our music, which is something that we never knew. We were shocked by that. Um, so in the last couple of years, since the last tour and the success of the last tour and album, um, you know, we've had the U.S. promoters onto our management stuff, uh, you know, ask, asking asking then would we be interested in coming to America? And look, it's a very simple question. You know, of course we want to be there. Um, so America is part of our plans for our next tour, whenever that may be, as Nikki said. Um, you know, when the pandemic kind of, obviously worldwide, this is obviously not just an Irish or a UK thing, it's worldwide and we have to wait till everywhere is safe before we can go international. And we can't wait to do that. Uh, but we have plans for, you know, our biggest ever tour that we've ever done. And it's going to include America uh, for definite, which is, you know, you know, a massive bucket list thing for us. So we're really looking forward to that whenever um, it happens. Obviously, as you mentioned, your uh, your last album, which came after your, you, you know, your your six year sort of hiatus or split, um, and then your reunion album, which has done fantastically well, and you worked a lot with Ed Sheeran on it. Um, obviously, the songs did great again, and your fans are still there. Did you ever imagine that you would still be here sort of 23 years on from when you first started back in 1998? You know, did you think Westlife will still be at the top of your game? <laughs> I, I, I actually don't think we did. Did we, lads? I mean, like, not after that outfit, anyway. Uh, no, <laughs> don't the smell of uh, those. Like, what do you I think, think when you see these old pictures? The type of band that we are, Jess, you know, I think when you when you think about the type of music that we are and the type of band that we are, you know, technically a boy band and all of that, um, uh, you know, it, it's definitely very, very strange to think that over 20 years ago was when we released our first album and we first started doing concerts and stuff. But I suppose um, things have changed a lot. You know, I think once you're still doing something that you love and once your fans see that you're still enjoying it and you're making good music, there's no reason why we can't continue, you know. Um, we definitely feel very lucky, I think, and very uh, proud, um, even more so of the fact that we have been going for so long. And, you know, we've definitely had uh, things, you know, obstacles in the way throughout the years. Uh, the split obviously was a big one. You know, a few years ago, we were obviously when we got back together, we were wondering, would the fans still be there? Would they or how many of the fans would mm. still be there? And last year's reunion tour, well, not last year, the year before now, I can't remember. 
Uh, but, you know, that reunion tour kind of really reignited us as a band um, and really reignited the want and the hunger for us as a band to kind of like continue to go and to continue to make great music and put on the best, you know, show that we possibly can, which we intend to do uh, at Wembley Stadium at, the, at that weekend in August. The best Westlife show that anybody has ever seen is, is our intention. And, um, you know, the production that we're putting together, everything, it's its full on. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So we're buzzing for that weekend. It's going to blow everything away, isn't it, of, of what you've done before. Is that, can you... Um, What's been your sort of best moment in the band in the history of Westlife? What would you say is the pinnacle apart from Wembley that's coming up? Well, um, I would say for, for as a band playing Crow Park Stadium um, is the ultimate for, for any Irish band. Um, it's one of the biggest stadiums in the world. Um, it's 85,000 people and we, we, we got to play it five times. But I think in the, on the last tour, as Keen said, the, reun the reunion for us reignited us as a band. Um, and we really got a hunger for it again. And we all have children now and we're in a different yeah. phase of our life and we're a lot more mature and we, we respect how, how massive Westlife is and, and what it does for our lives and our families. Um, so to be back playing Crow Park for those two nights, uh, I think was probably the two best gigs of our life. And yeah. probably the most proudest moment, I think, for all four of us as a band, looking out and just seeing that all over again, you know, and all yeah. them fans so dedicated to us. And and obviously back in the, back in the day that you had all your you know you were touring with all of the bands it was like peak boy band girl band time you know with Steps at S Club and A One and Boy Zone um, there must have been some great things going on behind the scenes on some of those like smash hit tours etc who did you get on with best and is there anyone who perhaps you know you might have had a run in with at any time you can give us a little little bit of one thing um, that we used to we used to hang around with all the acts. To be honest with you, Bewitched, Steps, um, plenty more. Some of them are still around. Some of them are, have gone on to other stuff. Um, but we used to hang around quite a lot with a bunch of Dublin lads called My Town, who basically are now know, known as the Script. Hey. So, yeah, so the Script were on one of the tours with us, um, and we spent a lot of time and a lot of nights in the hotel bars with those lads, and. So it was lovely then, sort of, I don't know how many years later, it must have been a good seven or eight years later, all of a sudden we heard this amazing new band, The Script, and then we seen pictures and it was like, that's Danny from my town, is it? And um, so, yeah, they just obviously kind of stayed together as a team, but changed their name and their style and obviously came back with an amazing yeah. new band. No, I, I know also as well as having fans like you've got Colleen Rooney, Wayne Rooney, Jamie Vardy, Rebecca Vardy. So that would be interesting if they both come to Wembley. Um, yeah, yeah, you've also had the people back in the past, like the Gallaghers, who have said some really horrible things about you. But you and, and even Gary Barlow, who once said, I don't understand who would go out and buy their records. But I saw that you actually did a, a lacuna session with him so do you have any what do you say to these people who back in the day were skeptics but you've kind of had the last laugh <laughs> uh, uh gary's gary's actually a friend a friend of mine he's a friend of all of ours he's um he's a lovely guy i never heard what, what you know him saying that back in the past uh maybe he didn't like one of our songs maybe back in the past and that's totally understandable you know not everybody's going to be a fan of every song oasis you know they might have been fans of westlife but you know you got to look at it like uh, there was a lot of people that were fans of Westlife and a lot of famous people are non-famous people. It didn't matter to us. You know, we just wanted to be successful. We wanted to make the best music possible. Um, and we have a lot of good friends in the industry and stuff. And we just we just focus on ourselves, to be honest, Jess. We don't really focus too much on what other people say because, you know, if you listen to critics too much, you start criticizing yourself too much then. Um, so we focus on what our fans love and that's who we make our music for. And we continue to to make this new album for our fans, you know, and, and hopefully we'll, you know, maybe Oasis might like this uh, next album. Who knows? <laughs> I hope so, because uh, they, they could do with uh, being a bit quiet sometimes, couldn't they, really? I, I actually think Oasis love our music. I really do. I reckon yeah. they do. I reckon I mean, they do. I was saying there about Gary as well. I th I, yeah, we all know Gary's a lovely guy. So, yeah. you know, I, would, I think if you ask Gary now that he knows us and, and, this is, and the fact that we've had longevity, he probably... Doesn't even remember saying that and wouldn't have meant that. Um, yeah. But certainly the Oasis lads, I think they secretly play our music every morning. 
Honestly, I, I did. Like, I reckon they put them on the day. Like waking up to hello, my love, every morning. I, I, I expect that. Like, if he doesn't, he should. He should. He should definitely. He um, dances in his kitchen in the morning in a pink tutu, listening to Fly Me Down Wings. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Finally, how long do you envisage yourselves being going on touring? Because, you know, you've got like the Rolling Stones out there. They've been doing it for years. You know, you've been together for so long. Are you, is it West, are we going to see Westlife, you know, keep going for the next 23 years? That's not superimposed, by the way, that picture. That was, that, that blue sky is not superimposed. It was actually really sunny. <laughs> That's lovely. You know what, last year, last year after the reunion tour, uh, we had a, we had an amazing meeting actually with um, with the promoter uh, Dennis Desmond, and he said to us, "The way we should look at ourselves is like a Fleetwood Mac, you know, and kind of like take it slow. Don't you know, just just kind of like continuously just enjoy doing what you're doing. And there's no reason why a band like Westlife couldn't be going in another twenty years and, and playing concerts in twenty years." Um, to just like enjoy the process, take it slow, you know, and just so for us, it's just take it bit by bit now. I think uh, this this Wembley weekend is going to be amazing. As Nikki said, you know, we're hoping that we can tour the rest of the world in 2022. Um, so really, after that, we'll just wait and see. You know, we're going to make a new record this year as well, which is going to be a big thing for us. And um, we'll just take it bit by bit. But I mean, we would love to be able to say that in another 10, 15 years, we'll still be touring. Why not? And you could do it right up to 80 because you've got the stools handy that you can just sit on. That's you see? Got the that's and that's, that's, what is, that's something There's to talk about. doorbells going. Yeah, that's my doorbell. Sorry. Um, right. I'm Thank you. Doorbell, Nikki. You can hear that. It's Liam Gallagher. It's Liam Gallagher. Oh, I'm going to come around to beat you up. I love yeah. it. You're gonna have a go. It's like, by the way, we've got to mention the fact that Nikki is sitting in front of his own homegrown bar, which is so impressive. I'm, yeah. Uh, 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 I'm hoping that we've all the got... lads have had a tipple, by the way, in this bar. They've all had a party in this bar, and yes. they've all had different things. Punch-ups. That's the only place you can get a pint in Ireland, Jess. Is in Nikki's <laughs> house. <That's> <laughs> How how do you all sort of get on when you're not performing? Do you have like a little WhatsApp group or do you? Yeah, we, have <laughs> we have WhatsApps, we have text messages. We actually, we haven't seen each other in about 13 months physically. Honestly, no. we haven't been together in 13 months. But we've probably seen each other more in you know, or talked to each other more in the last week than we have for the first five years of the band. <laughs> I love it. We're, we're I always love talking. It. We're um, always, always talking. It's great. Uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm getting a little message uh, from your people, so I'm going. We're going to have to say goodbye because I know you've got a dash off. But thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Um, it's been brilliant, and I can't wait to see Wembley. It's going to be awesome. Two nights there, historic uh, gigs. Uh, first back for two years, um, and tickets on sale today. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Thank you, everyone.